Good morning. This is Joe with Jolie Farms. I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about water in Ecuador. Water, as you well know, is a very important thing. Um, here in Ecuador, we have a lot of water. However, it's not all always good water. If you live in Vilcabamba, the water goes through the treatment plant and it gets treated with the chlorine, chloramines, all those nasty little things like fluoride, etc. So most of the people who live in town drink bottled water, um, at least most of the expats. Uh, some of the locals don't seem to be offended by the same things that we are in terms of uh, what we put in our bodies. Now, if you're thinking about buying property in Ecuador, I always suggest you have at least two water sources. Um, here, we didn't have that option in the home that we bought. Uh, so we've had to do a few things to overcome that. Our water actually comes from what they call the Junta, um, which is a water company, a cooperative, if you will. But the way it works is the water comes from the Podocarpus Park, which is way up here above my right shoulder. And in the park is the most pristine, clean river. And it comes down a big tube from that river into some giant tanks that are just below the park. And those tanks have some filtration. One of those lines that comes from those tanks comes over here to our home, which is miles away. There are actually about six homes on our water line. So we don't go to the treatment center. It comes straight here to our home. So this water is not treated. Um, we do some things here to make sure the water is safe and clean for us. I'm going to get into those things, and I'm going to show you that right now. So outside the wall here are two 2,500-liter uh, tanks. And uh, both of these are, again, hooked into where you saw it coming into the wall. And these have uh, electric float valves inside so that if the water level gets too low, the pump won't burn up. Automatically switches off the pump. And then the fill through this tube right here. And there's a float valve here, and then in the bottom, another float valve. So if it gets too low, again, it won't burn the pump. So it goes on back into where our pump is. Now, we just replaced the line. Right here is our water meter. And so water comes in, goes all the way up that hill and even higher behind there. To where we have two storage tanks. Then it turns around and comes back down underground and it comes over here and it runs right into our wall right here as you can see. So we just replaced this line going all the way up the mountain. It had a three-quarter inch what they call mangara which is a thin wall flexible tube and it was breaking up. The previous owner had installed that and it really was in poor shape, leaks everywhere, we kept patching it. So we just put in a one inch, uh, really strong flexible line, it has a, um, fibers in it, etc. It's a blue colored line, and so now we've got plenty of pressure. We don't need to run our pressure pump unless the water goes out, but the pressure pump automatically kicks on if the Junta water goes out. We have plenty of pressure coming from there, we got about 80 pounds or so, um, so yeah, lots of pressure. Okay, so we're looking at how we treat our water. Our water comes in from this line right here, which is from the Junta. And there's also two storage tanks that we have way high up on the mountain. Um, so it comes down to there into here. And then it's going to come into a set of three filters. Um, a larger sediment filter, a real tight uh, paper filtration, and then a carbon filter. Now, we've not had the need to do anything like UV filtration but that is possible. We could actually drop in a UV filter right in here without much problem at all. And our electricity happens to be right straight up here in that electrical box. So we could run a UV filter quite simply in here. We just have not. So it goes through these three filters and then it's gonna go back out to some tanks we have right outside the wall here. Then it comes back in, those tanks just store they're 2,500 liters each. And then it comes back through here. And it comes over here. And here we have an Italian 
pressure pump. This is a tankless pressure pump. It's all uh, digital, all automatic. So when the water from the junta goes off, which quite frankly happens quite frequently, we actually now have 10,000 liters of storage because we have two up on the mountaintop and then we have two right outside the wall here, which I'm about to show you. So the cool thing is, is when the water goes off here, we don't really even know it because our electric pump takes over and uh, it's unbeknownst to us. Okay, as I mentioned, we need to have at least two sources. So we have the one source I just showed you, which comes from the Podocarpus Park, that we pay for that water. And we also have rainwater collection that we do. These are 2,500 gallon, or excuse me, 2,500 liter tanks. And I've got eight of these on the property. So we collect uh, rainwater from our roof. I have a small electric pump right here. And I can simply turn on the switch that I've got here installed on the wall. And pump clicks on and the sprinkler will start to run out there. We use the um, what we call a wobble head sprinkler out in our food forest. And so I can run these sprinklers everywhere. And one sprinkler covers like a 30 to 40 uh, um, diameter, 30 to 40 yard diameter. So it does a really, really nice job. Um, but this is what we use when there's no rain, which we're now back into the rainy season. We're getting rain every afternoon, every evening. And for those of you who've wondered about um, propane gas, this is the tanks that they come in. Um, they're all the same, same size, no difference in size. And they're all $275 to $3, depending on where you buy them. And then they hook up to what's called a caliphone here, or you would know it as a tankless water heater or instant water heater. And so uh, these work pretty good. Um, the price on them has come down drastically. One like this used to be almost $400. I noticed in Aloha the other day they're about 165 So price came down really good. I always keep a spare one of those on the property. So eight of these tanks, and uh, so that pretty much covers us. Now, that covers our irrigation needs, but let's just say the junta runs out of water. I can pump this water all the way back up to our tanks just outside the wall. So um, yes, it would be rainwater from the roof. And we probably would need to put a little bit of Clorox in there, a little bit of chlorine, uh, just to make sure it's sanitized. But in a worst case scenario, we can do that. We've not yet had that need. Um, the longest we've ever been without water from the Junta is about a week. Uh, we already currently have at least a month's worth of storage now. And that's why we added the extra tanks outside the wall. So that's water in Ecuador. That's how we've accomplished what we needed to do here. And um, I think we pretty well got it covered. Be nice if we had a spring here on the property, but we just don't. I've had people come out and actually do some special equipment to look for a spring, and we just don't seem to have one here. There is one way up on the mountain up there on my neighbor's property. I could have access to that. In Ecuador, the water belongs to the people. So just because that spring's on his property, he doesn't own that water. I can actually go up there and pipe into it, file a little uh, form with the state here, with the province, and uh, and there's, you know, he has to let me do that. So I just would have to run tube all the way down. I priced that out, and it was going to be about $5,000 to be able to run it that far. So we decided to just go with the options that we have. Um, again, when you're looking for property, though, it's great to have at least two sources, because uh, you just never know here in Ecuador, everything changes. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give us a thumbs up. Ring the bell. Thank you.